Hello, I'm John DeVore. Welcome back to the DeVore Fidelity YouTube channel. Today I want to go a little bit into the anatomy of a speaker, and I'm going to focus today on uh, drivers, in particular woofers, although much of what I'm talking about with the woofer is going to be translatable to, to the dome tweeters that we use as well, and I'll show you how that uh, happens. What's the job of a speaker driver? Basically, it's to convert the electrical signal coming from our hi-fi into an acoustical signal in our room so that our ears can pick it up and then translate that into music, as if by magic. Well, how does it do that? Woofers like this, moving cone woofers like this, were invented about 100 years ago, and they've been improving things ever since to the point where I'm, I'm amazed all the time at how good a job and how convincing a job that devices like this do, presenting music in a listening room based on squiggles on a, on a surface of vinyl or bits of information on a computer. So how does it work? The basic principle behind drivers like this is the exact same thing as the principle in an electric generator. And that is a wire moving in a stable magnetic field will generate electricity. There will be current coming off of that wire as you move it in that stable magnetic field. If you flip that around, and you say you've got a stable magnetic field and you introduce a modulated signal into that wire, so the signal that that wire is receiving is changing, going up and down, you will actually induce force on the wire that will, that will push it up or down based on the signal that you're feeding it. And that similarity between a speaker driver and a generator is so fundamental that you can actually turn a speaker into a generator if you connect a voltmeter to the voice coil of this speaker and I push the cone back and forth on it, I am actually generating power and it's measured so we get a, a few hundred millivolts. It's actually the exact same principle behind a microphone. A microphone is being moved by the acoustical signal and that diaphragm's motion is being converted into an electrical signal uh, on a micro scale inside the microphone. Uh, and again, a similar thing is happening in a phono cartridge. So how are all these little coils and magnetic gaps making the sound in one of these drivers? Let's talk about the parts. There's an assembly in a speaker that moves, and then there's a structure in a speaker that is stationary. The moving assembly is most obviously the cone itself, and then attached to the throat of that cone, the narrowest part of the cone, is a voice coil former, which is a rigid cylinder that, that can be made from a stiff paper or plastic or even a metal. And then wrapped around the coil former is the voice coil itself. And that is the part of the speaker driver that's attached to your amplifier. The modulated signal goes into that voice coil, creates a fluctuating electromagnetic field in the coil, and that is responsible for causing the motion of, of the cone. The stationary parts are the magnetic structure, and the magnetic structure is the magnet itself, which in most cases is a, is a ceramic ferrite magnet, uh, but it can also be neodymium, it could be alnico, or it could be an electromagnet. And then in order to get the magnetic field into a very specific area, you have a top plate and you have a bottom plate or a pole piece. And what these two pieces do is that they bring the north and south poles of that magnet into a very specific shaped magnetic field. And that magnetic field is where the voice coil sits. As you apply a modulated signal to that voice coil, you're changing, you're modulating the electromagnetic field in that coil. And because of that, it is being pushed in and out up and down in that magnetic field based on the way that that signal is modulated. We are obviously modulating with music and so it is essentially doing a little dance in the magnetic gap. How does that get to the cone? Well, the coil is rigidly attached to the coil former and the coil former is rigidly attached to the smallest part of the cone. And the cone is now essentially acting as a mechanical amplifier. It is converting that motion from a very small device with very small surface area to a much larger surface area so that that energy can couple more efficiently to the air in the room. 
And it's the exact same principle behind how a dome tweeter works. The only difference, basically, is that the dome tweeter is that same mechanism up until where the cone is. There's no cone on a dome tweeter. Instead, there is a dome of textile or metal or even diamond that is covering over the end of that coil former and creating a much smaller diaphragm. And that is because uh, it needs to be far lighter in mass in order to move fast enough for the higher frequencies that a tweeter is called upon to reproduce. And also because the, the wavelengths of the frequencies that it's reproducing are so much smaller that it doesn't need a large cone for efficiency. It, it's fine with a small surface area. The, the remaining parts of this really basically are the, the frame. This is the driver chassis or basket. And that's a, a rigid element made out of molded plastic or stamped steel or cast zinc. And that keeps the relative position of all of the elements true. It's rigidly coupled to the magnetic structure on the bottom. And then the cone is attached with a suspension to that structure so that it is able to move freely up and down, but it's held in place so that it's not wobbling in that magnetic gap. The top of the suspension is, is attached to the widest part of the cone, and that's this rubber half roll surround on the top. This could also be made out of foam. It could be made out of a little accordion pleat of textile or paper. It could even be made out of a crimped edge of the uh, cone itself. There's a lot of different ways to, to achieve that. And the other part of the suspension is this yellow material down here. And this is a textile uh, and it's called the spider. It's an accordion pleated spring that is attached to the narrow throat of the cone where the voice coil former is attached and it's attached to the outside of the basket here. And beyond that, really the last thing is what's visible on the outside of the cone. Most speaker cones have what's called a dust cap. And this is literally a dust cap that's glued to the surface of the cone and it covers over the outside edge of that magnetic gap. So if you were to see in through here, you would actually see the top face of the pole piece. The other way to do that is with a phase plug. And a phase plug is a shaped piece of material that is attached to the pole piece inside there rather than being attached to the cone. And so you can see the difference is that the dust cap moves with the motion of the cone and the pole piece does not. It's not attached. That's the basics of how these moving coil drivers work. My plan is to make more videos in the future. I'll be talking about enclosures and how those work and the tunings. Uh, and I'll talk about crossovers and how crossover networks work with the drivers and the enclosures. Until then, thank you very much for tuning in, and I hope to see you soon at the next video. Bye.